Yeah, that's where you develop the skill around taking things. Oh, can we go? That can go. Okay, everyone, take your seats. It's about to start the moment you've all been waiting for, where you can roast the Fedora Council. Joking. <laughs> We're taking serious legitimate questions only. And there are several people I could eyeball here that would do the opposite of that. Okay. Welcome, everybody. This is the Fedora Council uh, Town Hall panel. We are here for the next hour to answer any and all questions that you may have around the Fedora project. Uh, we do have some opening questions. Um, we're going to introduce ourselves and a quick overview of what the, the council is, our responsibilities, and then we have a couple of early questions to start us off, and then we're going to turn the floor open to yourselves. So I think without further ado, we should probably do introductions, or should we start with what we, what we actually do? Introduction. Yes, okay. <laughs> See, this is how we make decisions as a team. <laughs> uh, so, hello everybody. If um, you don't know me, my name is Aoife Maloney. I'm the Fedora Operations Architect. Um, I have been with Red Hat for the last seven years, with Fedora for the last uh, five years through my older team, Community Platform Engineering, and now exclusively with Fedora for coming up to eight or nine months now. Um, I primarily manage the release schedule, work very closely with Fesco, and obviously, um, part of the Fedora Council. I will pass it along the line. Uh, hi, my name is Justin Flory. I am the Fedora Community Architect. I uh, started my Fedora journey in 2015 at this very conference, possibly in this very same room. Um, and I have been, it's been a roller coaster ever since. Um, see some of my former mentors here, did a lot with the Fedora magazine back in the day, um, helped work with the community operations team and the, uh, our DEI team, and then uh, in October 2022, I joined Red Hat as the Fedora community architect. So all things around events and community outreach and budget and record keeping and accounting and probably a list of 25 other things. Um, but that's a little bit about me. I'll pass it to I am Matthew Miller, Fedora project leader. I already got my introduction turned, so I'm gonna use my time to say, there's some nice open tables up here, and I think everybody at that table right back there should move up to this table or this table. Come on, come on, so far away, and poor Carl's lonely. I'm serious, come on. Hi everyone, my name is Adam Samalik. I've been a Fedora contributor for like 10 years now. I worked on a bunch of different things in the project. I think I mostly focus on user experience and making computers pleasant to use, at least a little bit. And right now I work for Red Hat and I'm the CentOS stream engineering lead. Hi everyone, I'm Yona. I'm the Fedora DI advisor. Uh, I've been part of Fedora for almost 10 years now. I studied as a Fedora ambassador in Albania, and then uh, I've been part of different teams, like the AI team, organizing Fedora Mentor Summit as well. And um, another topic that uh, I'm helping with is the, the mentorship. I, I have my, I brought my own. <laughs> Hi, I'm David Cantrell. You might remember me from the last panel. I am the engineering rep uh, on the Fedora Council, and I come from Fesco. And all the previous stuff I said about myself in the Fesco session is still valid. Uh, my name is Robert Wright. Um, I am a uh, part of the council from as an initiative lead uh, with Justin in Comps 2.0. Um, I've been with Fedora. I'm a longtime user, but a very recent uh, contributor in helping uh, make uh, Fedora better. So. Hey there, I'm Fernando. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. I work mostly on networking, uh, network manager in MS State, and at Fedora, I'm a packager, and also I, I'm leading a mentor project uh, initiative. Um, yeah, that's kind of all. Hi, I'm Smira. I'm a UX UI designer. Uh, in my day job, I uh, do accessibility stuff in the Python ecosystem. Uh, and in Fedora, I co-lead the Mentor Project Initiative with Fernando. I was also here as an outreach intern, a mentor, and now this initiative. And you make the slides pretty. Uh, and I make the slides pretty. We do have uh, four other council members, believe it or not, that are not actually here on site with us. Um, if you flick to the next one, yep, uh, we have Akashdeep Dar, 
we have Alexandra Fedorova. Their bios are in the Fedora Wiki. You probably are familiar with some of their names. Um, they're both elected members in the council, and Akesh works in the community platform engineering team. Alexandra Fedorova just works everywhere. Um, she's wonderful. <laughs> uh, so is Akash. And the other two members as well are Alberto Rodrigo Sanchez, who is the uh, Mindshare representative of the Fedora Council. And we also have Jason, Bro Jason Brooks, I was right. Um, he is the uh, Bootsy initiative lead as well. So he's also placed on the council during that initiative term. So yeah, we're, we're pretty well numbered in the Fedora Council. What, we, what it is, um, the slide says it all. We're a mix of representatives across the project, uh, both employed by Red Hat and uh, community volunteered as well. Uh, you can be elected into the council too. We have elections once per year. If you'd like to throw your hat in the ring for that, please do. Uh, the next election will be after F42 release next May. So consider joining our number if you'd like. Um, and we are responsible for mainly for the governance of the project. Includes things like trademark, legal, which we could do a slightly better on, um, some policies and guidelines, general caretaking of the, the project holistically. And we also have strategic planning for the project in mind. And I can see Matthew from the corner of my eye gearing up for this mic, so I'll just pass it to him quick. <laughs> I haven't seen these slides and they're very nice, that's all. <laughs> they're, they're, Fedora, they're Fedora made, one of the contributors, I I think it was uh, Jess Cheetahs, and I can be corrected, but I think they made the template for, for this. One, their design team made the template for the Fedora slide, so plug to them, they're great. Okay, that's who we are, what we do. Um, time to dive straight into some panel questions, and we do have one or two like pre-made pre ones we made earlier, with my little flashcards for Fedora. Um, so the main question I think is important to ask the panelists, well, we're all seated here, is we need to learn more about the Fedora strategy. And this is the perfect pe people to, to explain it to us better. Yeah, I guess I can start with a quick intro. You'll, you'll probably hear, you'll, you got a lot of this from the State of Fedora keynote this morning from Matthew. But in general, there's those six different focus areas that you might have seen up on the slides that are part of the strategy. Uh, and so all of those tie in, some of those tie into uh, community initiatives on the council that are happening right now. Some of them are tying into things that we hope to see from the community and encourage people to um, bring us some of their ideas and, and energy around some of these things that we know are, we know are recognized as important in the project. Um, but in general, they kind of go across different themes as well. Um, I know we've kind of gone, gone back and forth a little bit, but I like the kind of themes as of Fedora is for everyone, uh, building on the success of Fedora.next, and then what was the other one? Uh, there's, there's plenty of them. Yeah. There's three, but I can't remember the other one off the top of my head. However, those are kind of the areas that I think as we're going into this next chapter of Fedora and we're thinking about growing our contributor community, these are areas that we've recognized both from Linux distro leadership is as what Matthew says. Um, part of what we've developed is from community feedback over the last, we started these conversations in probably 2021, 2022 is when we started, like we should be thinking about our next strategy. So we've done a lot of talking to the community, talking to users about things that are important to them, which is why, for example, accessibility is a really, has been a really high ranking part of what users are hoping to see from, from Fedora, from Fedora Linux, among other things as well. Um, but you know, we're really trying to set the, straight, set the stage for the next era of the Fedora project. Thinking again about how we can sustainably grow our community. You already heard from Matthew about all these changes that are coming into the project. Um, so the strategy is all part of our way of how we can grow and adapt our project as a community and grow and kind of meet the challenges that are that are rising in the world in in the open source space and beyond. You want to add anything onto that? Yeah, um, I think right now, if you're interested in seeing more about this, the uh, strategy 2028 tag on discussion of Fedora Project Org is the best place to look. Um, but if you're looking for a good overview there, you will find a kind of spreadsheety view, which is not a great presentation. So that's kind of one of the, the main things we're working on is kind of the next steps and having a nice dashboard presentation of the overview that will kind of show the theory of change and logic model that we're working on. And so uh, that's one of the big things we're working on as a council to develop. So it, it'll come, I'll just be a little bit. You've got your own mic. 
I've got my own mic, what should I say? Um, one of the things I um, like about the strategy that there's two areas that it's focusing on, and that's like communication tooling and then the Gitforge stuff. And so I work in the CentOS project, and I think that like we have a bunch of common contributors. So one thing I personally would like to see us to share some of the tooling and processes so there's like less mental load switching between the two projects and there's no real reason to have different environments. So that's what's making me interested and that's why I'm here, I think. Um, why are you here? Uh, so for me, I, um, from the focus areas that we have, it's more the community sustainability part. Uh, so the mentorship, everyone in Fedora is a mentor and everyone has a mentor. Uh, and some of the things that we have been working on uh, with Fernando and Smira as well is the mentorship, uh, mentored project initiative. But also we have been organizing Federal Mentor Summit and um, also the next plans to focus more on the informal mentorship and how to continue also this work that is uh, already being done. Uh, and another one that I want to mention is the um, Another focus area that we have is reaching the world, so working with local communities. Uh, and this is one of the things, one of the topics that we are uh, touching as the DI team. Uh, and it's one of the things that we will be talking also at the Hackfest uh, on Friday. So how we can better support local communities uh, so we can get like more contributors uh, as part of uh, the community. Um, I guess I can add some uh, some items from the engineering mindset. Uh, so one thing that I think about is how do we continue to make Fedora uh, an appealing project for upstream open source projects to want to become part of. There's a lot of upstream uh, developers who, I mean, naturally they want people to use their software and when you the, the easiest way to do that, at least in the Linux space, is to get it packaged and included in a distribution. So bridging that between projects that are not uh, formally part of Fedora or projects that did not originate, say, at Red Hat, uh, making that more appealing and more welcoming and easier for projects to get involved with is, is the thing I think about. And also in the mentoring um, aspect. There's a lot of people who I see come in and they want to contribute some kind of uh, engineering aspect, be it code or um, a patch or something like that, and oftentimes don't know how to get started. So I think we can do a lot of work there um, in Fedora that will just sort of build and grow because once you, you know, mentor some, they can then mentor the next crowd and, and hopefully it, it becomes self-sustaining. So those are the things I think about and look forward to. I think it's really important that we're looking at the strategy both from what needs to be done in the short term, but also what needs to be done in the long term, as a, especially as Fedora grows and more contributors come in, making sure that we're keeping an open mind to what we can do to address problems that we have as a community today, knowing that these will be challenges we also have to address in the future. I also think it's really important that we're taking a data-driven approach with anecdotal feedback from the community at every step of the way because we want to know that people are coming in, people are engaging, and they want to be in this community, but also that as a project, we're doing everything we can to make everything grow and be the best place to, to do Linux. So, so I, I see the Fedora strategy from two points of view, uh, in essence, as a community and how to grow that community with mentorship projects and so on. I think it's really important to have a healthy community and a diverse community uh, to be successful. But also, I'm excited of how we are going to handle the challenges of networking in the different Linux distributions that we have, like the flavors and so on, and what are the different requirements and how to make a, a good experience for all the kind of Fedora users. I think for me an important area uh, in the strategy is community sustainability and the focus on mentorship to achieve that. I think that's an important part uh, to ensure that we have contributors who who have people to help them out and on board onto the project. And if people who like move out, um, the knowledge is not lost with them. They it's things don't die just because someone 
is not contributing anymore. So that's a really important part of mentorship, and that's what I'm excited most about. Okay, so I think we can turn it over to the audience. Do you have any questions that you would like to, to ask? I have a couple more here in case they're for backup, but. Hello, everyone. Um, are there any plans to kind of increase the communication between the council and mindshare sides of the project with the engineering side of the project, especially with the difference in communication platforms? And often to me, it kind of feels like the decisions made by the council are kind of happening in a silo that I'm not really feeling like I'm a part of at all. Who would like to take that? I can give a stab at it as well, but if... <sighs> not not a well-rehearsed one, yeah. I can try. So I think that there's two parts to that, and uh, the first is is that the initiative that we have right now in ComOps is partly to address the community side of it, in that we do believe that there's, I, I like to use the term paper cuts, things that are like little just little problems that are just kind of getting people's way of being able to collaborate. Um, I think some of the things that we're doing, and I think Matthew's talk had addressed some of it, the, the scatter problem of, hey, where is everything? Where are we engaging with things? And, and I think as a council, it's not necessarily something that we're at the level of individual SIGs in, in you know, kind of the activities, but I think it's important that we're bringing up the challenges and we're, a, we're looking at those and addressing them. And that's part of what ComOps is kind of there to be that interface, I think we're still kind of in the early stages of what Commons is supposed to be, so we can act as a conduit to be able to pass that both to Mindshare and to the council. But I think in the interim, I think it's really a, a piece that we're not 100% like there on how we should be getting in that feedback, but it's something that I know that is important to be able to address, like, hey, how are people's uh, reporting issues? How are they reporting, you know, hey, there's friction between kind of teams, what are we doing in that? But again, I think it's a lot of a, there, there's initiatives in place, it's just we're kind of still in that early stages of being able to address it, so. Yeah, and just a quick build on that, that's definitely an area that I'm thinking about because of the community operations initiative, and I'd say kind of the two things, the two areas that we're focused on in that space of trying to address is what we've called I don't know, contributor experience, process improvement. I don't know if we really landed on it, but it's one of those two things. And that's the focusing more on trying to help encourage and teach best practices about how to be successful as a SIG or working group or team in Fedora. Because we all kind of have, there are some kind of best practices, but we've never really standardized them or written them down. I think the work that's happening with the mentored projects on the role handbooks gives us a pretty interesting model that we can look at for those kinds of things. But in general, like trying to focus more on how different teams interact and collaborate and to try to, as Robert said, you know, solve some of those paper cuts, that's part of what the community operations team is doing. But then the second half of that team is what we were calling community social analysis, which really is just trying to be more mindful about the data that we have to better understand, you know, what people are feeling and thinking and wanting in the project. And that might be from like qualitative means, like surveys, but it might also be quantitative things such as activity in the Fedora messaging bus. Um, maybe other things too. Um, but I'd say those are the two places that I'm definitely thinking about together with Robert and as well as some of our great uh, team members who are in community operations. Some of them I know are here at the conference. I don't know if they're here in this room right now, but um, that's kind of, I think, a good place to follow if you're interested in these kinds of things and following along. Check out pound comops colon fedoraproject.org on Matrix. And we've also got our docs site as well that's got a little bit more about what we do and where to find us. On a practical note, if you want to follow what's going on in the council without getting into a fire hose situation, uh, the community blog is probably the best channel we have right now. That was one of the bubbles up on my slides there before. Um, you can either go to the WordPress site or you can subscribe to that by email for new updates. There's an RSS feed or you can go to um, you know, the uh, discussion category where they're mirrored to. Uh, so that's a good thing to follow. Um, also, everything on discussion has an RSS feed automatically attached to it. So if there's things you want to follow that way, that's another way you can follow areas that under your own, own control. But um, there. But yeah, um, I think being better at this in general is something we really do need to do.
I think it was really clear in uh, your presentation, Matt, that uh, fragmentation seems to be one of the biggest obstacles to gaining new contributors. I certainly see that as someone who's interested in helping out with docs. Um, however, let's try to look at the positive side. Um, is there anything that the uh, council has learned uh, from areas in Fedora that have effectively worked well together and effectively completed projects? And one that I was uh, involved with a little bit was the website rewrite, which I thought went extremely well and turned out beautifully. Our new website, I think, is awesome. Um, so is there anything that was learned from that and how that community worked together or that segment of the Fedora community worked together that could help with the other fragmentation that we have in the rest of the project? So for example, one area in the Fedora project I worked before was the Fedora magazine. That might be slightly cheating because that's just like right in front of there and we can have a link, please contribute and here's how. But like we had a um, documentation site that, well documentation page that documented like all the process. We were having public meetings in like the same space and a, pub like a publishing process with a queue of articles and anyone could either submit an idea or write something or edit and we had like very clearly defined ways how to do that and then we sort of like grew the team that was writing or editing things in there but I don't know if we cheated by like being right in the face and having the link to all the resources but I think if there if there is like one place where you can find like all the teams in Fedora and where they're active that might be easier to then enter I think. Yeah, uh, we've been wanting to have a thing like that for a long time, and every attempt we've had so far has not succeeded. So um, I feel like centering things around a Git forge is a good way that's kind of aligned with how a lot of open source projects work today anyways. It's kind of what people expect. So maybe fifth times the charm on that, but yeah. Um, definitely like making it easy to find those connection points is something we need. Um, I, I can add an example for something that we've uh, started recently in Fedora, uh, and, and it's actually taken a number of years to get this off the ground, and that's the Fedora legal resources um, thing. And you may have seen stuff where we're moving to SPDX license expressions, and there's different phases of, of moving packages and things like that. That all began... Um, I, I want to say over three years ago when I started working on a project that w would look at RPMs and validate those license tags that, that we have in the license field. And the, it got that data from a JSON file and I you know, started going down the rabbit hole of who owns this file, what's the process for it, and I came to learn that there were actually three different groups that were creating that data file. They didn't really communicate with each other. And then in Fedora, we had we had this very detailed wiki page that, that Tom Calloway put together with the table um, spot. I don't know if he's in here or not. Uh, but that, that was really useful. That was the primary uh, resource for Fedora. But a lot of this stuff didn't really align. And so being an engineer and not wanting to own um, a database, uh, I said, we need a process around this. So I recruited some people from Red Hat's legal team, some other contributors in the community, and we started down this long road of putting together what is now the Fedora Legal Resources documentation, and we documented the, the process now to get a license reviewed, to submit a new license, uh, license. We moved all the data off a of wiki into a Git repository and came up with a process there, even submitting new licenses that we find to SPDX for inclusion there where appropriate. And this has been something that like I view it as a success, but it, it has taken a very long time. I've learned, uh, you know, we had some missteps initially, uh, but I think that really what it came down to was just having people that genuinely cared about doing the right thing for Fedora and seeing it through to the end. Um, and 
anything else that we do to just make sure you, you know, a group or a team covers all those aspects of how to find the information, how to find who's involved is, is key. And I don't think there's one set pattern. I think you would ask for, for some examples or something, and I think that's what we should do is just look at the ones that are successful and say what, what worked and what didn't work, and how, how can we apply that to this other group that needs, you know, needs to be overhauled or, or something like that. Um, but I think the legal one that's still going on, if you want to participate, feel free. Um, and it's, it's uh, just kind of taken off. And the best thing is I don't own the data. Uh, so that, that, was, that was really nice. Just to be, um, just add to David as well, and what you may be looking for is we have a thing called a community initiatives proposal. Um, that's something that I don't know what we say, maybe learned from the websites and apps re revamp, but certainly was more, it became more defined because of their success. And as David was explaining the SPDX licensing, a lot of the same characteristics are there as they were in the websites and apps. There was clarity, there was energy, there was people really wanting to make a a positive change. Um, certainly the websites and apps revamp helped us define what a community initiative should have to be successful. And you can propose an initiative um, if, you, if you see a problem in Fedora, we highly encourage you to, to do so. Um, find, find people who care about it, come together, check out what we require for an initiative to, to be proposed to the council and you know, likely we will approve it if it's, if it's gonna make the project a better place, absolutely. Um, that's, we have initiative leads sitting on the council because they saw a scatter problem in mentorship. You know, they wanted to consolidate the mentorship process in Fedora. There's com ops because again, it's, it's scattering and there's people needs signposting and if we're providing that with human form to signpost and help, we're doing that. So community initiatives is definitely your path to bringing the problems a little to reconciliation through Fedora for sure. Yes, um, also I wanted to say that from the point of view of Fedora Mentor Projects Initiative, the first things that we did was to do a review of what we had, what we were doing, what worked and what didn't work. And from that, we gathered feedback from people involved in the past with mentor projects, mentees and mentors, uh, organizers and everything, and we started creating a plan to keep what worked and yeah, dispose what didn't work and try to uh, look for a, a better thing and solve the problems that we had in the past. So I think that's, it's, in my opinion, kind of the way that we should move forward, um, looking at what is working and what is not and then uh, from the past and then try to improve the parts that are not working at all. And also being a community initiative, uh, you also have the help of council, which, you know, being people from different teams, it helps also to um, help uh, which ones you can, you know, <clears throat> sorry, my voice. Uh, it helps basically to bring the right voices for the topic uh, you want to check out and work on. And I think that's, uh, for example, with Fernando and Smira, we were doing, you know, we were checking uh, what kind of things we are missing and who in the council can help us because also people in the council know other people in the community and make all things easier. That's why I think the community initiative and being part of council, it makes it uh, easier. Any other questions? So I'm curious about how the council and support work together. So um, the Ask Fedora, the whole discussions, the Fedora forum, great place to ask, ask questions. My favorite that I ask are ones that have no answer, because now I know I stumped everybody. Um, but um, there's that free APA set. So I definitely, there's definitely avenues to get and have that feedback, and we definitely welcome and encourage people to bring that to us in our channels as well. Um, helps us also get more feedback from folks instead of it being uh, just the, the council folks too in our meetings. Maybe Adam and Matthew. Um, um, you were asking mostly about like technical questions about problems with Fedora, for example, right? Um, Does the council have any oversight or involvement? Yeah, I can answer that. How yeah. people get access to the Matthew can answer that. My answer is I don't know, but do we have a badge for maybe answering? Questions? That would be interesting. 
<laughs> we want one where Robert was helping me something and I dropped the ball on badges oh. for that. But, I call table, yeah. <laughs> um, but so, so for a long time in Fedora, our primary support channels were IRC and um, a user's mailing list. And uh, both of those um, had kind of a reputation for being hostile, which is not a great thing for a primary support channel. Um, and you know, IRC is, uh, probably a lot of people in this room are like, I love IRC, it's easy and great. But um, I think in general it is an esoteric um, dawn of the internet kind of um, way of communicating. And uh, it, it, that's it, telling people that they need to figure out IRC first in order to get help with their system is not a very friendly way to do it. And, and I think you know, also for the last decade, sign up for a mailing list to get help is also something most people don't want to do. So um, some people in the Fedora community, contributors who work in different areas, um, a, a lot of people from the Fedora ambassadors group in particular uh, came together and said, we want to set up an Ask Fedora site. Um, there's, you know, the uh, Stack Exchange has, you know, there's an Ask Ubuntu kind of thing. So they wanted an equivalent. And so we originally, you know, they came to, I guess, the council, I'm not sure. Um, so we, when, the, when they made that request, we funded the hosted software for that that was using a thing called AskBot. And then when that didn't work out very well, we switched that to Discourse. And that's where the um, Fedora use of Discourse started. We also set up another parallel one at the same time and then eventually merged those all together into the current discussion site. So um, I guess, to go back to it, um, there is an independent team of people that is kind of the active core of Ask Fedora and um, we're working on getting a better formal moderation structure there that's kind of connected into one of the initiatives. But as a council, you know, that team came to us with a request, hey, we need this kind of resources to do this. Can we can you figure that out for us? And we did. Um, so that's that's how we support that, I guess. Um. We don't have a, a dedicated end user support in Fedora because it, it's all community based. We're relying on the goodwill of the Fedora contributors themselves that if you find a problem on Ask Fedora that you know to answer, we hope that you do answer that for that person because that's kind of what fuels the Fedora support, it's, it's each other. There's really no better way to make sure you know something than to try and answer user questions about that thing. Um, it's like, if, if, and so I actually try to, you know, look at Ask Fedora every now and then. I obviously can't spend all my time there, but I try and look at, see what people are asking and answer things that I know. And I think, actually, I'd encourage everybody who is an active contributor in Fedora to try that sometime and see how it goes, because that can also help people, but it's also helpful for yourself to do that a little bit as well. Um, one thing I think is also important too is I think as a council, a lot of what we do is in more in the governance type role, right? So I don't think we really dictate how support should be done, but more in that enablement capacity. So if there's users who are having issues or if there's problems that we have in the community that are you know, we, we, something's wrong, something needs to be addressed. I think it's important that we're speaking up, but I don't think it's necessarily always us to make that decision either. I think it's we're here to make sure that the cohesion of those things and it, all the different teams that are working together, that their voices are heard, and when there are things that need to get worked out or we're all trying to help, you know, how do we all work together as one, you know, project, right? I think that's really where we stand together. But I think it's also important that, you know, everyone here too, right? Like if there's challenges that are in this space of, you know, hey, how are we supporting users, right? I, I would honestly echo not even as an answer to that question specifically, but to, I think we should be raising those kind of questions in discussion and asking and talking with ourselves of how should we be doing these things? And if there's those problems, I think it's not just us to make that decision. I think it's a good point of conversation amongst everybody, so. I'd like to add to the current question that's being, by highlighting the work of another community member, Hank Lee, um, get, did a Fedora article in Fedora Magazine very recently, um, and he is advocating that if there is a good answer that comes through on Ask Fedora for common problems that seem to be popping up for users frequently, that that would get transferred into uh, documentation. And so I think that would be a help to users who are having technical issues if we could get some good, solid answers on Ask Fedora and then mark those, flag those as documentation additions 
and then get those into the regular user documentation so it's searchable and findable. Yeah, no, 100%. And I, I think I'll just add is I, I think these are the kind of things that we think we should be, again, you know, raise it on discourse or discord, right? Discourse? Discourse. Discussion. 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 Yeah, Fedora yeah. discussion, thank you. Um, you know, I think these kind of things don't have to just be kind of conversations we have at Flock, but I mean, I, I don't think we as a council can are, are going to solve it. I think that's just, hey, these two teams, how can we work together, right? Open the, the thread and how can we work together on it, right? And if there's things that we can do to enable it, I think that's really what we want to be able to do because I think that's a problem that you know, how can we help docs, right? How can we help ask work together, so. I just wanted to say that that's a great idea um, for like very easy non-technical contribution to like, hey, have you found a good answer? Flag it, that's like one type of contribution. And another one would be, hey, there's a queue of like these flagged things. Go and integrate them into the documentation sites in a sensible way. You don't even have to understand it. You just need to be able to like find a place for it. And these are like two types of nice contributions which that would be good not to forget. Um, forums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, that that um, the uh, Hank and a bunch of other people who I really only know by their usernames, so I'm not going to give us. Uh, there's that the thread that I referenced about the you know scatter problem is exactly that the docs team and the uh, Ask Fedora people kind of working together, uh, you know, ground up, not council coming down and saying, "Hey, you work together, you two, But the the people just working together to figure out a solution to that. And I think that's really where the best answers always come from. Um, are there any efforts within the console to increase diversity in the project, whether that's racial diversity or gender diversity or more queer people or even just more younger people in the project? Yes, let me pass the mic though. <laughs> Uh, so, as part of the DI team, uh, we have been focused on the contributors and how, basically, as you mentioned, to make it more diverse and so on, and some of the things that we have been working on. Uh, this year have been a bit more um, around events, so we had for a week of diversity uh, as one of the things. Um, and mentor summit because somehow also the, the the mentorship is connected also because you bring you know uh, people also from different uh, local communities and so on um, and another one which actually we are currently focused on is the local communities which we would love to have actually some help because especially having people from uh, different cities countries and so on would help also us how we can support them and um, so one of the ways would be actually someone interested in this would be the Hackfest that we are doing on Friday, uh, which is exactly focused on this one. Um, and else I would say, I mean, usually we are like really open to different ideas. Uh, we just try our best also with the resources we have as a team, you know, to, to focus on like different things. But definitely since now we were a bit uh, to focus on events. Now we want to try a bit more the other side, different initiatives that maybe we can uh, we can work on together. Another thing that we do uh, is we get a lot of outreach interns. Outreach focuses a lot on underrepresented communities in tech, which bring people like me in here in this position. I started as an outreach intern. And that's something that we have been doing strongly for so many years now. And it's great to have the support and have the funding to be able to continue to to do that for more people and for more projects within Fedora over the years. So I think that's a very good avenue of bringing more diverse people and uh, into the community and getting them into positions where they can continue to make those changes and efforts to bring more people on board and just make that a cycle. Yeah. One of the ways that we like to think about it in ComOps is, is that Fedora has like a funnel right? We have our user community, or, or even above that, right? People who are just interested in Linux, right? And then people who become users, who then become participants in Ask, who then become contributing or kind of go into these different teams. From a diversity angle, I think it's, it's important that 
we're not only making sure that the funnel works for everybody, and we're making sure that we want to grow the project as a whole, but as we do that, that we're partnering in step with DEI to be able to enable those folks who may be in underrepresented parts of the communities, right, who are coming into the project, and we're making sure we're being inclusive and opening those doors so as they go through the funnel of becoming a contributor, right, that we're open for everybody, right? So I don't think there's necessarily a, a concrete thing that we are doing that is specifically a, a goal to, to increase that, but I think it's more as a whole, how do we make sure that everybody is enabled to become more active in the project that you, you know, you all want to be here, right? That we all want to be engaged, but I think it's, it's an important that, you know, we have so much representation that's even on the council here today, right? Like, I mean, self for our pride, right? You know, I, I recently joined council as a part of ComOps, right? I, I think there's a lot of these types of things that are, uh, that are growing and it's because we have so many people like you know, and I from the DEI side, like Justin, like so many others who have really mentorship, right? It's, it's really because of those things that's enabling more folks to come in and, and again, progress in that funnel, so. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, our, the Fedora vision speaks about uh, open source, a better world through open source for everyone, and I think uh, that for everyone part is really important. And I just want to also give a shout out to Outreachy as an amazing program, not just in itself, but for like the long lasting impact it has because we have so many people who came into Fedora from that internship program who are still around Fedora with, you know, the only incentive is being still around Fedora. Like there's not like, uh, you know, continuing pay or, you know, the other like external rewards for it, but you know, that, you know, um, people come in throughout Ricci and become involved enough that being, you know, part of our community is, uh, is the reward and uh, that's, I don't know, touching to me, I guess, and yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll add three things. One, just to read the vision statement, which I nice. do think is is really important. You know, for our entire project and community, the Fedora project envisions a world where everyone benefits from free and open source software built by inclusive, welcoming, and open-minded communities. We might not always get it right all the time, but I think, like you know, and this is when I think about my arc in Fedora and what's really kept me here before I was doing this as a job is it's always just been the people, like the Friends Foundation of Fedora. Like we might not always get it right every time, but I always feel like, from my experience being as like a, a lowly contributor nine years ago to doing more of being in the governance end, I really feel like people believe in this, in the project, in the community, and recognize it as important. So I think there's that kind of part that we may not always get it right, but we're committed to trying to get it right and to improve and iterate. The second thing I just wanted to call out is like with things like Flock, for example, is that you know one of actually the biggest expenses that we have for this conference is our travel because we provide a pretty, I'd say like hard to find this in this space, but we provide a lot of travel assistance for people to come to Flock and even not just to Flock, but even other regional events sometimes who you know might be economically disadvantaged or have issues, you know, aren't going to be able to do that kind of cost for themselves and they're not getting paid for it as part of a job. So I just wanted to call out that, you know, like a big part of things, like even just this event, like we've done a lot to try to make it more open and inclusive and bring people here who, without getting that kind of support, would never be able to make that kind of journey or travel on their own. So there are definitely things even on that end and like definitely around events, like that's where my mind is thinking a lot. Um, but the third thing I just wanted to call out that I also think is important and falls into like diversity, but doesn't get talked about quite so much, is role diversity or skill diversity. And I think that's something that, again, we don't always do it perfectly in Fedora, but you know, I just known so many distros where it's all about the packages, it's all about the infra, it's all about the code, and those things are still important, of course, but in Fedora, we do really have a wide range of places and types of contribution pathways that people can get involved with. And I think it ties into that kind of wider diversity piece is if we only think of it as like there's one major way to do things in Fedora and it's land a package or land a patch in something, then that you're only, you're going to be, it's one kind of other avenue of limiting yourself from a diversity perspective. So I think just trying to celebrate and, and have visibility for all these different things that we do in our project in the community, like in the mindshare half of the project 
that's where I gravitate towards because that's what I've kind of always been into in Fedora. But I think it's really important, you know, that we're, we really make it clear that there's many ways to be involved and to contribute and participate in a community like Fedora. And I think being good at advocating for those things directly and indirectly ties into that piece about wider, like, you know, racial diversity or gender diversity, um, more queer people, more younger people. I think all those things are kind of adjacent to role diversity too, because I think it just gives people more pathways of things that they can do in the project, in the community. I think I'm getting a sign for the next question, so. So if I understood that right, the question is just kind of about how we do testing and quality, like having a more clear processes around how to do that kind of work. Yeah. Okay. I feel like the people I'd want to ask, we have had a, a, our Q, some of our QA team represented on the council before who I would probably turn to more for that, but I don't know if maybe David, I don't know if you want to add something there or? Is Samantha in here? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you want to take this one? Yeah. All right. So. What? Oh. All right. So um, answering that, um, we actually have some processes, but for very specific packages, like you mentioned. We do not have any test case yet. We would want, however, to have more exposure on how to write test cases and more onboarding as we go along. So this might be a good call for me to basically do more onboarding calls for, from the QA end of things. So guys like you who are willing to help out can actually help out with testing. One, two, I would also be very interested to know if um, I can speak to you, I mean, privately, and we can discuss on how we can do this better, but I would definitely record your experience for uh, upcoming days. Yeah, so um, you probably guess this is going to be a CentOS question. Um, so the, uh, it, it seems to me like we have, uh, you know, a lot of overlaps between the Fedora community and the CentOS communities depending on how you, you slice the demographics and, and things like that. I wonder if, uh, you know, maybe a couple of you have some, uh, some lessons that you've learned, uh, you know, governing, administrating, or stewarding a project that you would like to give to the CentOS project? And what would you like to receive from the CentOS project in terms of lessons that they've learned as uh, uh, just an overall uh, set of guidelines? I'll have a fast one, and it's that I think we've done this more in the last couple of years, but more of our events shared together, like at Flock, having the CentOS and Friends track. We do a lot of collaboration at CentOS Connect. Like, events is kind of my universe, but I feel like there's more that we can be doing to share common efforts, because we have so much in common, from our contributor community to the, some of the general kinds of activities that you do in a distribution. Um, so I'd like to see even more collaboration around, like, how we share physical space, because I think that's just so important for projects in general, but also virtual space too, because there's always gonna be people who can never travel and you can, as I've learned from the COVID years, there's all these kind of people you can include by doing really good virtual events too. So I'd love to see more CentOS and Fedora like mixing there. I think one thing that's uh, something that's really unique in Fedora is all the community blogs we do. I think there's a lot of people who here do both Fedora, CentOS, other, just everything, right? I think there's a lot of things that because there's so much overlap that there's opportunity to talk about the other things with a Fedora context plus the other projects and how they relate together. And so we're not only educating kind of 
our community about you know how Fedora connects to the broader ecosystem, whether it be upstream packaging or downstream or anywhere, right? Um, but really, just engaging and and kind of just putting it out there in like kind of that blog form is something I think is really really important that we should be doing more, honestly. So, I'll throw in my two cents to this, Brian. <laughs> I was in the two for a while. Um, I read so from what I what I experienced working with Center Stream team and then with the Fedora teams as well was. Um, I enjoyed CentOS's openness to adopt Fedora tooling to make their lives better, and that was that was really nice to to see. Like I know that there's Fedora messaging in CentOS Stream. There's a, there's a lot of shared under the hood tooling. It would be great to see even more. But I understand, like you know, while it's all fruit, it's still apples and oranges are still different. So I mean, you have to kind of take take a little bit of that pinch of salt too. Um, what I would love to see and. I'm just talking, this is my own point of view, two cents, so apologies if this is a bit basic, but uh, approachability from the CentOS community members and board, um, we don't see it enough. I'd like to see more of you. I know who you are, you're nice people. I'd love to see more of you. You should be doing a panel up here. Um, so that would, that would be nice to see. I mean, the Fedora the panelists, we're everywhere, we're always chatting, you can always pull up on anyone and they won't mind, but you know, it's that, approachability, you know that you can come up and we will talk. And I'm sure it's the very same as Sandus. It just doesn't seem to be as obvious in my point of view. And I don't have an answer to your question, but like one interesting difference is between like the Fedora community and the CentOS community is that Fedora has more like a shared purpose of like doing this um, operating system while CentOS is more about the SIGs and they have like their own purpose they don't necessarily need to even overlap and they can build their own thing on top of the operating system so that the governance there might be a little bit different on purpose as well. But I don't know where I'm going. I think I'm just going to stop. <laughs> I actually think we have to stop now anyway, so that's a, that's a good ending for it. Um, thank you, everybody, for your questions, for your attention. Thank you to uh, panelists. Come find us. We can always talk for days.